Welcome to this skill acquisition video on ability or skill. Now in this lesson, we're going to answer two key questions. First of all, what is the difference between ability and skill? And having figured out the difference between them, we're going to talk about how skills and abilities relate to one another. What's the connection between the two? So let's get started. So first off, let's do some definitions. What is the difference between abilities and skills? Well, the first key distinction between the two that we need to know about is that abilities are innate, whereas skills are learned. So that word innate literally means something that you're born with. It's a part of who you are. So whether that's in terms of your physical makeup or your psychological makeup, it is what you have, it's who you are. Whereas a skill is something that you learn, something that you acquire, hence the topic of this uh, series of videos being skill acquisition. It's something that you, you can learn, it's something that you can develop, it's something that you can take on board, it's something that you can acquire. So abilities are innate, inbuilt, if you like, genetic perhaps, and skills on the other hand, are not there they are learned over a course of time secondly abilities are basic that simply means that they have very few components to them they are simple whereas skills generally speaking tend to be much more complex and obviously there are some skills that are more and less complex but in comparison to abilities, skills can be thought of as being complex because they have multiple components to different skills. There are different parts to a skill, whereas an ability is a singular thing. And we'll give some examples that make sense of this as we go through this video. Next then, abilities are goal independent. Goal independent. That means that an ability does not have a purpose necessarily there is no inbuilt purpose to that particular ability whereas a skill on the other hand is learned for a reason so we say that a skill is goal oriented that is there was a, there was something in mind that caused you or prompted you to learn that skill so that you could achieve a particular outcome so whereas abilities are innate and basic and inbuilt and therefore they're goal independent, you have them whether or not you use them. Skills on the other hand are learned for a purpose, for achieving a particular outcome. And in our context we're, we're talking about sports skills, so you've learned particular skills in order to be better at your chosen sport. Finally then, one more distinction between these two. Abilities can be thought of as traits. A trait is something that defines you to some extent it's something that's inbuilt so it's similar to the idea of it being innate it's something that's relatively uh, relatively permanent relatively set relatively fixed as part of who you are it's something that is central if you like to your physical being so that's a trait it's it's settled it's it's fairly secure it's not going anywhere a skill on the other hand is can be thought of as a behavior so again it, it links in with some of these other ideas of, of a skill being learned something you pick up over time it's a behavior in the sense that it's something you do a trait can be thought of as being something you are or something that you have whereas a skill is something that you've picked up something that you've acquired a behavior that you've learned to excel in so that's a really key starting point as we get to grips with the difference between abilities and skills. Now I'm going to slightly complicate things um, from this point on as we talk about some examples of abilities and skills. So I've put eight potential abilities or skills on the screen now and we're going to decide whether or not each of these eight things is a skill or an ability based on our understanding of our definition just now so first off then balance where would you put balance would you say that balance is an ability or is balance 
a skill and this as I've said is where it becomes somewhat complicated because typically we would acknowledge we would recognize that balance is something that is innate because it's something that um, people tend to be better or poorer at by virtue of their physical body and so we would tend to put balance on the side of ability but that's not to say of course that you can't improve or work on that uh, innate ability and make it better so you can improve your balance but balance itself in its purest sense can be thought of as an ability next up then is visual tracking and the idea of visual tracking is the idea that you can follow the movement of an opponent or a ball or something like that um, through space so how good are your eyes and the connection between your eyes and your brain at tracking an object through its movement well we would again consider that to be something that's genetically based it's something that is innate something essentially that we're born with it may develop over time but it's not necessarily something we've learned and so we don't categorize it as a skill we would think of as of visual tracking as being an ability but what about dynamic strength what do we mean um, what do we mean by dynamic strength first of all so we know what strength means um, but dynamic strength would be um, the ability to exert a force repeatedly um, and, and so it's very similar to some extent to the concept of muscular endurance so this dynamic strength is the ability to repeatedly produce a force over a period of time uh, in response to an environment so would that be an ability or would that be a skill well for the purposes of this uh, video we're going to say that dynamic strength is in fact an ability and again we can improve it we can make it better we can train it and improve it but in and of itself it's something that is innate it's part of our set of abilities as a human being well what about jumping is that an ability or is that a skill well this time we're, we're gonna we're gonna say that jumping is in fact a skill because it's a, a relatively complex movement that has to be learned over time and so again we can improve our quality of jumping but in order to jump in the first place we must apply um, a certain range of abilities put them together to produce a skill so jumping has multiple component parts multiple component parts so we're going to say that jumping is in fact a skill jumping is a skill what about reaction time what are we going to say reaction time is that the ability to respond to a stimulus well again we're going to say that that's inbuilt that's innate that's something that we have as part of our, our makeup as a human being so we're going to say that our reaction time is in fact an ability and again there is some extent there is some extent to which we can improve our reaction time but reaction time it's itself we're going to suggest is an ability well what about throwing well again throwing is something that we can't necessarily do from birth or we can't do from birth to be precise so therefore it's something that we have learned and since it's something we've learned throwing is a kind of behavior so we're going to put it across on the skills side on the skills column climbing is another example of a skill um, and the reason it's a skill is because it requires a multitude of different elements a multitude of different competencies in fact you can think of it as requiring a multitude of abilities put together to create a behavior to create um, something that is learned so we're going to put climbing on the skill side now here's an interesting one decision making so is decision making something that we are born with or is decision making something that we learn over time well i'm going to suggest that decision making is something we learn over time the elements that allow us to make decisions such as our cognitive uh, abilities they they are as i've suggested abilities but the decision making itself 
is learned over time. We become more proficient with our decision making. So I want you to notice that skills don't necessarily have to be exclusively motor skills. They're not exclusively body related skills because decision making is also a skill but we will consider this a cognitive skill rather than a somatic or physiological or a body skill. So what's the difference between the two? We've got these, this list of abilities on the left hand side here, balance, visual tracking, dynamic strength and reaction time. These are things that are innate. They're not necessarily goal oriented. So they're goal independent. We have them whether or not we use them for certain things. And skills on the right hand side, these are the things that we've learned in order to accomplish certain tasks. Um, and for sports, we learn a whole range of skills in order to be better at our sports. And some of those skills are sports specific and some of those skills are not sports specific. But nevertheless, we have learned them over time for a particular purpose. And so that's a key distinction between abilities and skills. So let's talk briefly. And I've noted this idea already but let's just make it a little bit clearer how skills and abilities relate to one another so essentially what I'm going to say is that if we're going to take the idea that the overhead clear in badminton is a skill it's a skill because it's complex it has multiple elements to it there's um, there's a cognitive element there's a, a perceptual element where you've got to watch the shuttle as it moves through the air you've got to move your feet you've got to rotate your body you've got to select the the speed of the racket head and all these kinds of elements that go in together to make up a skill so we're going to say that the overhead clear in badminton is a skill because it's got multiple elements and it's not something that you're born with it's something that you have to pick up over time and you pick it up because you want to learn the skill therefore it's goal oriented okay so the skill uh, of overhead clear contains it's complex it's learned it's goal oriented and so therefore it's a behavior it's very clearly a skill but this skill is made up of or consists of the only way we could perform this skill is if we rely upon certain abilities that are innate so what i'm trying to say here is how do skills and abilities relate well abilities are taken and put to use in order to produce a skill. We take our abilities and by honing them and combining them in different ways, we can learn a skill. So the skill of overhead clear requires a certain range of abilities. So for example, it requires the ability of flexibility. There's a certain amount of bending that is required um, extension and flexion of different joints, a different range of uh, motion in various joints that are required in order to effectively complete the skill or indeed effectively learn the skill of the overhead clear. So flexibility would be an ability that links to or that underlies or underpins the skill of overhead clear. Well, what are some of the other abilities? And let's just go through, through these a little more quickly. Dynamic precision dynamic precision, the ability to be precise and yet moving at the same time. Coordination, the ability to coordinate the movement of the feet and the arm and in fact the whole body and also the eyes and to coordinate all those things together to produce an effective skill of overhead clear. Power, and not simply just the ability to produce power, but the ability to regulate the amount of power that's, that's required to play the overhead clear, how far it's got to go and how hard, therefore, the shuttle has to be hit. And then timing as well, to be able to put all these things in the right order, at the right moment, at the right pace. And there are other abilities that go in to make up the overhead clear. But the point I'm trying to make is that we can conceive of an ability as being the building blocks of a skill. Abilities are building blocks for skills. The skills themselves have to be learned and we have to decide what we're going to learn and why we're going to learn it. And then we make use of our innate abilities in order to put them together in a certain way, in a certain combination, in order to produce a skill and then continue to hone that skill. So that's how abilities and skills relate to one another.
So what are the implications then of this way of looking at skills and abilities? So we've identified that abilities are the building blocks of skills and that several abilities combine to produce a skill. So with that in mind, could it help us to answer this question? How useful is ability testing for identifying or predicting potential? If we can test a group of young people and discover what their innate abilities are, perhaps through some form of biometric testing, then surely we can direct them to a particular sport or a type of sport at which they're most likely to be successful. And in fact, that has actually been tried by uh, various national sports councils in pursuit of sporting excellence for that nation. But the question is, does it work? How useful is it? Does it work? Well, the short answer is not really, not really. It may be useful when combined with some other factors, but in and of itself, that kind of ability testing is fairly unreliable. So why is that? Well, it's because of the nature of learning and particularly the nature of early learning. So early learning and later learning are significantly different from one another. And early learning where we're picking up new skills is so different to later learning. It's really hard to say with any kind of degree of certainty, any kind of degree of certainty that the abilities that we see in a young person will definitely produce a skilled performer in the long run. So aside from the social and the cultural and the economic factors that affect that, there are three main reasons as far as skill and ability and uh, just pure learning are concerned why that's the case why it's so difficult to use ability testing for identifying or predicting potential so first of all early learning differs from later learning in the, in that it often requires a, a very broad or wide range of abilities and a, a number of different kinds of abilities so if you're learning to ski or to swim or to shoot there are so um, there are so many abilities in the mix and these abilities are shared across all sorts of different sports and activities that it's not really possible um, to identify and isolate a select few abilities that might become the key abilities required in later learning. So in later learning, it is true that a handful of abilities become prominent. But the point is, you can't even get to that point without having had that broad range of abilities to get you there. So it doesn't serve much purpose in identifying a narrow set of abilities that characterize well-skilled players in later learning and then trying to discover those few abilities in those that are in the early learning stage, trying to discover those abilities in youngsters. Secondly, the abilities that are most relevant and most important in early learning are actually different to those that are most important in later learning. So early learning, and we sometimes refer to that as the cognitive phase because of the reliance upon um, the brain and thought processes during that early learning phase. Early learning tends to rely more on perceptual rather than motor abilities, perceptual rather than motor abilities. And what I mean by that is that in early learning, there's a need for concentration and focus and attention and similar, mostly cognitive abilities. But these become less central as the learner becomes more autonomous in their performance. And so in later learning, motor abilities become more relevant rather than perceptual abilities. So they become these, these perceptual abilities become less central as the learner's more autonomous and the centrality of uh, perceptual abilities then it fades and the importance of motor abilities rises. So this therefore obviously means it's really hard to pin down exactly which abilities need to be uncovered in a young person so which abilities do we need to uncover in a young person to ensure that when they get to later learning, they will, they will still have the abilities there when they get to that point to ensure that they've got the required abilities to take them all the way from novice 
all the way through to elite in a particular sport or activity. And then thirdly, there's a huge influence over learning exerted by verbal comprehension. Verbal comprehension in early learning in particular limits learning. And we're thinking about young kids in particular here. So to put this simply, when I, when I say verbal comprehension, put simply, it means how well does that learner understand what the coach is saying? Does the learner understand the coach's instructions? If you can't understand what's being asked of you, then how can you possibly improve as a performer? This is an important consideration, obviously, if you're working with kids and young kids, especially. So you may even be identified as having a particular set of suitable abilities. And those abilities you might assume would make you successful at a particular discipline. But if you aren't able to take on board a coach's instructions, then those abilities are going to remain unhoned. Later learning, of course, that verbal comprehension is less inhibitory. It's less of a problem. It's less of an issue because as you as you get older and more able to understand uh, the, the instructions of a coach, it becomes less of an issue in later learning. So the point is all three of these considerations combine to mean that even though we can identify the abilities that combine to make up a particular skill, ability testing is of limited usefulness in terms of indicating the likelihood that a person will become a skilled performer. So to finish with this, a question for you to ponder. Is it possible to overcome the lack of innate ability through deliberate and consistent practice? So taking on board all that we've said about ability and its relationship to skill, is it possible to overcome lack of innate ability through deliberate and consistent practice? And I'm going to leave that thought hanging. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification icon so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. Um, that's all for now. Take care. See you next time.